In this video I'll discuss trick functions. We'll start with the basic functions and build into an elaborate example. First up we have y is equals to sine x. And what I've drawn is the basic trick function for y equal to sine x. The graph starts at 0 and 0 degrees. It moves to a turning point at 90 degrees and 1. Meets the x-axis again at 180 degrees. Then a second turning point or minimum value at 270 degrees and negative 1. And then it completes a full cycle at 360 degrees. And a cycle in trick functions we call a period. So it takes a period of 360 degrees to complete one full cycle. And this can continue indefinitely to the right or to the left. In our second graph, we have y is equal to cos x. It starts at 0 degrees and a maximum of 1. It moves to 0 at 90 degrees. Then its minimum value is at 180 degrees and negative 1. Then back to 0 and it ends at 360 degrees and a maximum value of 1. Now cos also has a cycle of 360 degrees. So the period of the cost graph is 360 degrees. This cycle then can also continue indefinitely to the right and to the left. And thirdly, we have y is equals to tan x. Now the tan graph has asymptotes at 90 degrees and 270 degrees within um, a full cycle. That means the tan graph does not have a maximum or a minimum value. They are infinite values. Also, at the asymptote, the tan graph will never be able to meet or cross 90 degrees. But if you look carefully within this 360 degrees, you can see that after 180 degrees, that same cycle repeats. So it takes only a 180 degrees for tan to complete a full cycle. Therefore, its period is 180 degrees. For the next few examples, we'll use y is equals to sine x as our base. And first off, we'll talk about amplitude shifts. So an amplitude shift is if you multiply the definition, the trigonometric definition, by a value in the front. Let's consider y is equals to 2 sine x. So we are multiplying the function with 2. So our original sine graph moved between plus 1 and negative 1. And now that we have shifted the amplitude, it is stretched out to be twice as big. So we can see that the graph is stretched out and the turning points are now at plus 2 and minus 2. And to find the amplitude of this function, we multiply half with the difference between the maximum and minimum value of this function. So it will be half times 2 minus minus 2 and that is equal to 2, which coincidentally is also the value in front of sine. If I multiply sine x with negative 2, two things happen. First, the amplitude is shifted or the graph is stretched out by two units. But also the negative speaks about a reflection. So the graph is reflected in the x-axis. So two things have happened. The graph was reflected in the x-axis and it is stretched out by two units. And the amplitude of this function is still half times the difference between the maximum and minimum value. And the maximum and minimum value is still the same even though it shifted position. So the amplitude is also positive 2. Next up, we move to period shifts. Now we have y is equals to sine bx. And what this b is doing, it has an impact 
on the angle size or the value of x. So if you consider y is equal to sine 3x, it means that the graph would complete a full cycle three times faster, or its new period would be 360 degrees divided by 3, and that is 120 degrees. So what that would mean graphically is that the original graph would take 360 degrees to complete a full cycle. But at sign 3x, a full cycle is completed within 120 degrees. Or I could say that three full cycles will fit in 360 degrees. Also notice that the turning points happens three times faster. So it'll be 90 divided by 3 for the new maximum and 270 divided by 3 for the new minimum. The amplitude in this case is still the same. Next up we have vertical shift. y is equal to sine x plus q, where a positive q value would move the graph up and a negative q value which shifted downwards. What that would mean graphically, if we, if we have the original function y is equal to sine x and we subtract it with 2, it means the whole graph is shifted down by 2 units. So the new maximum is at negative 1, the new minimum is at negative 3, and the graph rotates around y is equal to negative 2. So meaning it will reach negative 2 at 0, 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Next we have horizontal shifts. y is equal to sine x plus p, where p shifts the graph right or left. Let's look for example at y is equal to sine x minus 30 degrees. In order to find the shift, I find it's easier to take the bracket and set that equal to 0 and then solve for x. So plus 30 on a number line means I need to move right by 30 degrees. Graphically, that means that the graph is shifted right by 30 degrees. So instead of starting at 0, it will start at 30 degrees. Its maximum turning point will be at 120 degrees. Instead of going through 180 degrees, it will go through 210 degrees. Then the minimum turning point will be at 300 degrees and a cycle would end at 390 degrees. So if I have y is equal to sine x plus 30 degrees, it will be x plus 30 degrees equals to 0. Therefore, x needs to be negative 30 degrees. That means I'm shifting left by 30 degrees. So that means the sine function would start at negative 30 degrees, reach a maximum at 60 degrees, cut through the x-axis at 150 degrees, minimum at 240 degrees, and end at 330 degrees. So now we're going to start with an example that leads into an exam type question. So let's consider fx as equals to cos x plus 45 degrees and gx as negative 2 sine x plus 1. And first we want to draw f and g on the same axis of symmetry. But notice there is a restriction on x. x is limited between negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees. In order to draw the functions, I would use my calculator to find the critical points. So I'm simply going to substitute values for x in my calculator. The first one would be the lower value. So it will be cos negative 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. And that is equals to 
negative 0 0.71. Then I would move in increments of 45 degrees because we are shifting the graph by 45 degrees. So at x equals to negative 135 degrees, the function of f would be equal to 0. If I add 45 degrees again, it will be at negative 90. Next, I'll shift another 45 degrees. So the value would be 1. And I'll continue to do this at every 45 degrees up until I get to 180 degrees. So for the cost graph, I would see that negative 0 0.71 and 0 0.71, 1 and negative 1, and 0 come in as I find these critical values. Next up, let's go to GX. And instead of using 45 degrees as before, I would simply use increments of 90 degrees. On my calculator, I'll have negative 2 times sine negative 180, I'll close the bracket, plus 1. And that is equals to 1. So at negative 180 degrees, gx would be equal to 1. And at negative 90, the graph will be equal to plus 3. Then at 0 degrees, equals to 1. Then at 90 degrees, equals to negative 1 and at 180 degrees it is equal to 1. And that is the graph of GX. Now on these functions we can see that they intersect at two possible values. Now a possible question that we can find is where does gx, or for which values of x, does gx intercept the x-axis? And we can see that there are two possible values. Now an easy way to find that is to set gx equal to 0. That means negative 2 sine x plus 1 equal to 0. And let's solve values of x. So negative 2 sine x would be equals to negative 1. Therefore, sine x is equals to a half. Therefore, x will intercept at 30 degrees. So we know that this value is 30 degrees. But you can see there is another value. And because we're moving between quadrants, we can see that this value would be in quadrant 2. So it will be x is equals to 180 degrees minus 30 degrees. Because remember, on the Cartesian plane, quadrant 2 is 180 degrees minus. So our reference angle is 30 degrees. Therefore, x will also intercept the x-axis at 150 degrees. Now, as we can see, there are two possible points of intersection. Now, to find these values fall outside of our curriculum. But a rough estimate would be for x equals to 14.5 degrees and x equals to 108.5 degrees. Now, we can ask a question like, for which values of x is fx bigger than gx. So if fx, which is the yellow graph, is bigger than gx, it will mean that it is above gx. And we can see that fx is above gx for these two values between these intersection points. So for the x values between 14 and a half degrees 
and 108.5 degrees. Another question that we can ask is for which values of x is gx smaller or equal to zero? Now we are no longer concerned about the other graph. We simply want to find the values where gx is smaller or equal to zero. So from the x-axis, we can see that the graph of gx is smaller or equal to zero between 30 degrees and 150 degrees. So it's 30 degrees up until 150 degrees. Another popular question is, for which values of x will fx times gx be bigger than zero? Now we need to look at the position of the graphs. Above the x-axis, we would consider them to be positive, and below the x-axis, we'll consider them to be negative. And when we multiply, if we multiply two positive values, it will result in a positive value or a value bigger than zero. And if we multiply two negative values, it will also result in a positive value or a result bigger than zero. So now we need to find where these graphs are positive and negative. The easiest way to do this is to follow the graph from left to right and to take a pencil and indicate where the graphs shift from negative to positive. For example, fx shifts from negative to positive at 135 degrees. So here, fx is negative, but gx is positive. So a positive times a negative would be a negative value, and we are looking for bigger than zero. Then I follow the graph and I see that GX intersects the X axis at 30 degrees and at between these two points we can see that both graphs would be positive. So this satisfies this equation. If I multiply two positive values, it results in a value that is positive as well or bigger than zero. So the x values is between negative 135 degrees and 30 degrees. Then here we need to be careful. We can see that fx intersects at 45 degrees. So the one graph is positive and the other one is negative. And then if we follow through, we would see that GX intersects at 150 degrees. And in this section from 45 degrees to 150, both graphs are below the X axis or negative. And two negatives will result in a positive value or a value bigger than zero. So therefore X needs to be between 45 degrees and 150 degrees.